Manic Expression proudly presents Podcast Plays with music by Les, edited by Mark D. Nicholson, announced by Alex DeCorville. Tonight's presentations, Little Monsters by Kevin Guglielmo and Patricia Miranda. Podcast Plays are brought to you by Manic Expression's Cafe Press Shop. Boldly go where no one has gone before and pick up some merchandise while you're there. I thought that, you know, maybe we'd, we'd get to 25 members it would go for, you know, six months, and then it would all collapse. You know, nobody would nobody would post anything, and after a while, it would just become kind of a defunct site. And um, to my great astonishment, it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And rapidly, also Expression Creative Chaos, a film by Decker Shado, coming soon. And now, Little Monsters by Kevin Guglielmo and Patricia Miranda. This is ridiculous! I'm about to be late for my first day of work as a mediocre high school teacher to a bunch of little, immature, average-minded savages of our monsters. Teenagers. I can't believe it! My life couldn't be much worse! I was one of the most renowned, hard-to-get college professors who had a brilliant mind in multiple science majors. A whole group of young, fresh minds who sought out my unique philosophies to science itself, and such an all of that was taken from me in one day. One horrible day that'll burn my cerebral cortex for all eternity. And that was the lesson for today. Any questions, students? Yeah, I, I have a question. How does a turtle and a cat from some old cartoon that nobody cares about anymore has to do with biology? Ah, my young, naive, average, my young fella, the world does not follow one philosophy. When you want to work a past success and you don't know how to get there, there are many folks in the world to go to. It depends on how hard or how easy you want to get there, and it really affects you on which path you take in different ways. Sometimes you want to think outside your understanding and see the perceptiveness of others if you truly want to succeed. But whether you do it or not, it's up to you. With this example, it gives a whole new way of thinking, as well as gives you that interesting nostalgic to the memory lane, with some classic cartoon about Good old-fashioned random humor. As for the turtle and cat reference, I was trying to connect them, make a happy and healthy relationship, despite the fact that they are different in almost every way. Does that make me elaboration that I was discussing clearer? No, not really. In fact, that just makes it sound a whole lot more idiotic. A cat and turtle can never live together. The relationship is not possible. 
Don't make it as though it can't be possible just because you saw it in a cartoon. Well, I guess that's not my problem. If you can't comprehend her, you're going to have a difficult time in your life if you don't understand other people's unique ways of how they see the world besides your own. Listen, man. I wasn't forced. I was forced to take this stupid class because it's the last credit I need to finally graduate for this semester. And I'm not going to fail because of your perspective views of science doesn't make any sense. I doubt that when I become a scientist, I'm going to be talking about stupid cartoons. I don't know who's more whacked out, you or your philosophies. You pay for making fun of my theories! Mr. Gadsden, we need to talk. Please, Principal, is Professor Egon? It's a lot easier to remember. Uh, yeah, Professor Egad. This is the sixth time this year that you were complained by the students about talking mostly about cartoons instead of science and primordial soup. You were pulling off a very unorthodox punishment to those who didn't agree with your philosophies. Principal Archibald, this particular then mock my serious deserved punishment. Nobody deserves to endure that kind of cruel, unusual punishment, especially this student. <laughs> With all due respect, even though he's a member of the Field Theta Kappa, a baseball superstar, a straight-A student of math and science, and going out with the hottest girl on campus, no student shall get special treatment from avoiding punishment. You of all people should know that. Not when this student is my very own son. Oh. Pack your stuff, Professor. You're done. During that one day, my reputation was ruined ever since then. No other colleges or universities have sold out for me. No lab was anything to do with me, and I've become a huge laughing stock. I've been reduced to a minimum wage teacher working at some public high school, who's now late for his first Stay in school because of the stopping traffic! I hate my life! <laughs> Stupid horn. <laughs> Good morning, students. My name is Professor E. God. Yada, yada, yada. Enough of the introductions. Let's get started with today's lesson. This particular science series is something that you probably never heard of before. Today this isn't about primordial soup. And no, this isn't the kind of soup you eat with crackers. <laughs> Alright, enough with that. That's as much humor you'll be hearing from me this semester. Anyway, primordial soup is a theory like the Big Bang Theory. It's the space. The theory is how life was first formed. There have been a lot of references to primordial soup. In fact, there's this one cartoon that... Actually, never mind. Anyway... In conclusion, with the mixture of these amino acids, they make the proteins that form life itself. Any questions before we move <laughs> on? <laughs> oh dear, I knew I should have turned left instead of right. I feel scars of life. These snot nosed finger bearing three hours sleeping simians with my intellect. How can this situation get any worse? <sighs> Sorry I'm late, children. I forgot this week's snacks in the car. Huh? Who are you? Um... Ta-ta! Excuse me, teacher? Yes, Tyler? Do we have quackers for snack time? Uh, I don't know, Tyler. Why? Can we have primordial soup for snack time, please? Allison, Allison, wake up, honey. It's time for your first day of school. Oh, Mom, I don't want to go to school anymore. Come on, Allison. I know that middle school was hard for you. Hard? I felt so awkward towards everyone else. I was too tall for my age, too shy to talk to anyone. I didn't fit in. All my past relationships didn't work out. And I'm so clumsy. Let's face it, I'm a freak. Oh, Allison, you're not a freak. You're a beautiful, sweet, kind girl. Things will work out for you eventually. 
That's exactly what you said in my middle school graduation. The day that I went to get my middle school diploma and begin my journey towards ending a chapter in my life and beginning a new one, I tripped on my feet and pushed the valedictorian off the stage. Oh yeah, how is Helen doing? I don't know, I haven't heard from her in a while. Is she still angry at you? Yeah. That and the fact that it's kind of hard to hear her speak in her body cast. Look, Allison. Everyone has made mistakes. Even I had to go through tough times when I was growing up, but I got over it, and so will you. Now please, give this another chance. It'll be a lot easier now that your friends will be going to the same school as you are, and they haven't seen you in a while, four years to be precise. We'll see how much you've grown. I guess... I'll give it another shot. That's the spirit, dear. Now get dressed and come downstairs right away. Your breakfast is getting cold. Oh my, you've been having quite an appetite lately, Allison. Nancy, she's a growing girl. She's gonna need a lot of energy for today. I suppose so. Goodbye, dear. Have a nice first day of school. If you accidentally break anything or anyone, call me. Love you. No, that was the old Allison. The old clumsy, shy, awkward towards others Allison. I'm a different person, and I'm going to prove it to everyone else that I can be just as cool and easygoing as everyone else. Oh man, the bus dropped me off at the wrong step and I'm so far away from the train station. I'm going to be late for work unless I find a bus stop in this strangely dark town. Ah! Giant! Are you alright, sir? Glad to see you're okay. I'm fine as well. I'm always used to guys falling at my feet. <laughs> ah! My day just keeps getting better, doesn't it? Welcome to Dread City. If you're easily startled, then turn around right now. We warned you. Don't blame us if you die of fear. Alright, whatever. Enjoy your stay. Hey, guys. Allison. Allison! I'm just so glad to see you again. It's been, what, four years? <laughs> yeah, yeah, four years, three months, six days, and 235 seconds. But who's counting? Well, seems like you're the same as always, Wolfgang. Wow, Allison, you've gotten so big since we saw each other. How tall are you? Twenty? Twenty-five feet? Thirty feet, actually. Well, looks like you've taken the spot as the tallest girl in the group, as well as the most prettiest once again. As for me, I won't get any bigger than six foot three, and I've been trying every beauty product to make my complexion look decent, but it hasn't worked. You're so lucky that you're so beautiful. Me? You're the lucky one, Elsa. At least you don't have to worry about crushing cars when you go out walking at night. Well... Or worry about little monsters asking you constantly the same questions regarding my height. And please don't get me started about my school life. Look, Allison, I know that you're stressed about your height and your clumsiness. But believe me, things will be better for you. After all, Things happen for a reason, both good and bad. Instead of complaining about your life and focusing only the bad incidents that happen to you, try to take those incidents and learn from your mistakes to make yourself a stronger individual. That's how I see things. Thanks, Elsa. You always say things that make me feel happy. I wish I was as wise as you. So, where the heck is the bus? Who said anything about waiting for the bus? We're in high school now, Allison. Buses are for little kids and losers who can't drive. None of us can drive, Sheldon. We're not even old enough. Yeah, I know. I didn't say we could drive. Otherwise, I'd be able to stay in the gym in longer periods of time. Gotta stay in shape for the wrestling tryouts. So, how are we getting to school? Alright everyone, get in the car. Let's get moving. But move slowly. I just had a new paint job, and if you get even one scratch, you're dead. Well, unless you're already dead. Then, well... Well, Allison, I thought I'd never see you again. Hey, Mark. Well, what are you waiting for? Get in so that we won't be late.
Oh wait, I forgot. I'm driving a small but beautiful red sports car. Not an army tank. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit, Mark. Yep, he's the same egotistical immature moron as always. That hasn't changed a bit. Shut up, Wolfgang. At least I'm driving you guys to school. Mark, why would you say that? You know that Allison is very sensitive about her height. You better apologize to her. Mark, you're an idiot! Yeah, I'm sorry. You're just saying that because Drake and Elsa told you so. Yeah, so? Ow! That was uncalled for! You deserve that and more, but I don't have the guts to do it right now. Great. How about if we make this a little more fun? Wanna go for a little race? Oh, I see that you're still the same as well, Allison. But there's a difference between now and four years ago. I had a mountain bike and the school was eight blocks straight. This time, I have a very fast car and ten miles towards the school, straight toward the mountain. You think you can do it? Well, Allison, looks like I win. Hey, where is she? Man, what took you so long? What? How'd you get here so fast? I climbed the mountain that led towards the school. Well, Mark, looks like I win. Welcome aboard, future frighteners of the world, to Crypt Academy. This fine facility was built so that we can continue on up upholding the reputation of scaring the human race, having on the legacy of the monsters before you. Hey, maybe you even have what it takes in becoming one of the greatest monsters of all time. I am Mr. McGriffiths, the principal of Crypt Academy. From what I see, it looks like that we have a lot of students that are offsprings with some of those monsters this year. In fact, we even have a section of the academy that commemorates them and their greatness. If you just follow me, we'll head there right now. Man, Drake, I wonder if my mom and dad are there. Be really cool if they were. Yeah, I'm sure they're there, show. Don't worry. Hey, how about you, Drake? Do you think your dad's there too? No, Sheldon. Why would he be there? I mean, <laughs> he wasn't that famous. <laughs> Good one, man. You always end up saying that. I mean, I don't know any other monster that's a, more of a well-known phenomenon than your dad. <laughs> hey, hey, Drake, where'd you go? In Transylvania, sipping an ice-cold bloody orange smoothie while relaxing outside my father's castle. Where do you think I am? Oh, sorry about that, man. I guess I don't know my own strength. But you gotta admit, those extra upper body workouts have been paying off. Don't worry about it. I guess I've gotten used to pretty much all the crashes, bumps and bruises over the years of being your best friend. I forgive you. Thanks, buddy. Don't touch me! Yeah, sorry. Here we are, students, the Hall of Fame. Here, as you can see, the monsters that are up on this wall have earned the right to be here forever. Remembered as the scariest, most frightening creatures in the world. Their unique ways of scaring humans, as well as becoming a household name by seeing them in movies, television shows, cartoons, and even books and video games, and even your weekly tabloids, has made them even more famous at being able to withstand the test of time. Now, as you could see here... Hey look, sis, it's mom and dad. I don't remember going to that village. Well, big brother, the reason that you don't know about the village is because that picture was taken years before we were born. Dad used to tell us every night during dinner time about the days when he and mom first got married. In fact, I think that picture was taken during their honeymoon in Romania. Oh, yeah. Wait, what? Yeah, I had a feeling you wouldn't remember. Here's some advice, Sheldon. You should work out your mind a little more. There would always be situations in which brains would always surpass brawn. What can I say? Using my brawn comes more naturally for me. I guess it runs in the family. See, Drake? I told you that your dad would be at the wall. It'll be a matter of time until we're at the wall beside our parents, scaring humans alongside them. Hey, 
Who are those monsters? I've never seen them before. You don't know who these monsters are? They are some of the most famous monsters on TV! Sure, they weren't around for very long, and they went to another monster academy, but they sure left a mark on human society over ten years ago! Ah! Oh. Ah, oh, Professor, glad to see that you made it to the academy. I thought you would make it. Well, I had a... Interesting morning. I apologize for being a tad bit tardy. Fair enough. Students, this is Professor Ernest Gaskin, a very renowned educator who took his time from teaching students for a big university and giving lectures at the science lab to teach at the academy. So we should be very thankful that he is here to teach you a thing or two. Ah, uh, please call me Professor Egon. Principal, it's, uh... My pleasure to take my time from, uh, my busy schedule to teach these, uh, teenagers some knowledge. I'll be in my new room to prepare for my first class. Well then, it's about time that you guys started to head to the main office and get your class schedules to go to your appropriate classes. Remember, you won't be able to scare anyone just yet, since you're new, so I don't want you to wander into the human world to scare anyone just yet. We are still trying to keep the secret of our existence intact, so please don't do anything reckless and stupid when the time comes for you to go do your assignments in the human world. Other than that, have a nice school year. Well, if it isn't the discussing duo, it's been a while, guys. Shut it, see-through boy. We haven't forgotten how you ditched us last year at the human ceremony party last year. We were caught by the principal and had two months of detention because of you. Guys, guys, that was ancient history. Surely you can't be that dumb to wallow in the past. Actually, I'm giving you guys too much credit. You're testing our patience, Invisible Boy. Oh, well, in that case, you both receive an F-. minus. Why, you... Hold on a second, Norman. I think I know a way to make him pay for what he's done to us. What do we have to do? Actually, we don't have to do a thing. All we need to do is give him a little push, and he'll fall down hard by himself. I like it, Brandale. I can't wait to see him squirm. Well, get ready, because it begins now. So, you're trying to see if they decided to put your dad at one of the walls in the Hall of Fame? Well, you just passed it. Really? Where was it? Oh, there's a whole section of him. Can't you see that empty wall over there? There's his invisible picture, and his invisible plaque. Be careful not to bump into that invisible trophy of him over there. That's not funny! You're gonna pay for that! Huh. <laughs> what are you gonna do, Mark? Seriously, what can you do? You're not even scary. You're just invisible. That's why you were held back last year. You couldn't even scare even one human. Not even that four-year-old girl who was afraid of her own shadow. The principal's never going to put your dad into the Hall of Fame with the other monsters. He was just a stupid human who did a stupid experiment that turned him invisible and... Mark, Brendel, Norman, what are you doing out in the halls? Why aren't you in class yet? Uh, we're on our way right now, sir. All right, boys, move along, and don't make me catch you out in the halls during class again. I'm giving you a warning because this is your first day. This teacher's really irresponsible if he shows up ten minutes late for his own class. Maybe he's, uh, running into traffic. Maybe he's the kind of teacher who shows up to class with a bang. I doubt it. Good morning, students, and welcome to Scaring 101. My name is Miss Nightgrave, and I'll be teaching you the basics of scaring, regardless of which monster you are. After you've mastered the basics, you'll be given the right to the human world to do your assignments. Before you head there, you'll be given these patches. These patches come in different colors, depending on the difficulty of the human you'll be scaring. After you scare the human, it'll change white when you did it good, and it'll change gray when you didn't do so good. That'll help me know which level you are in scaring. There are five different colors that come with it. Yellow is the color for small children, or 
scaredy cat such as yourself. <laughs> Green is the color for the older children. They don't scare as easy as the small children, so you have to put in a little more effort in scaring them. Blue represents the teenage humans. Brown represents the adult humans. They're the most hard to scare, but you won't be scaring them until you had at least a year or two of experience. So, uh, what's the fifth color, Ms. Nightgrave? Oh, you don't need to know about the fifth color just yet, young Dracula Jr. But I can tell you this. The fifth color is for the most advanced monsters. Many have tried to do it. Few have succeeded. All right, Mr. Sarcasm. You think you could be scary? Well, here's the ultimate test. If you can pass this, we may consider you to be a little scary. Here's what you need in order to prove yourself that you have scared the human we're about to set you up with. <gasps> no way! This is a black patch! Where'd you get this? We stole it from Miss Nightgrave's desk, as well as the file for the human that you're about to scare. Here you go. Are you serious? You want me to scare the unfrightened one? <laughs> That's right. You have until tomorrow morning to scare the unfrightened one, or else you have just proven to yourself and your loser dad of being unworthy to be here. Good luck. This is it, Rupert. Only a few more pinches of this dust and dead man's skin, and I've finally done it. The most potent potion that I ever created. This will definitely, definitely get rid of these annoying stains in my doll's clothes. I know it. Ah, oh, seriously, Crystal. Can't you create a spell or potion that will actually be of use to us? Like maybe a potion that turns people into frogs or toads, or a spell that turns young people into dust. You know, something you will like that instead of your stupid concussions. Ew, that's gross, Rupert. Why would I do all those disgusting things when I can create a potion that gives me instant clean clothes for my precious dog collection? Well, that's because there was something invented for that kind of purpose. It's called laundry soap, you idiot! Crystal, you are a bit capable of doing the most sinister things and having the potential to become the most evil creature in the world. And here you are wasting your time doing all these stupid things for your stupid dolls. Every day you spend the call that I give you in the morning to purchase milkman outfits and cheerleading outfits for your dolls instead of for devices from one time and you're collecting more dolls for your collection. <laughs> Oh, what can I say, Rupert? You can never have too many dolls. You do realize that I do not care for you so-called dolls. I'm a mother god. I crave for it. It's in my nature. After I transfigured into a cat after my last master died, I was hoping that my life would be a little more exciting. I mean, I've got a lot of kill as a cow working at the farm and then being with you. At least I had to kick stupid kids from time to time. So that being with the witch would mean I get to sow my full potential. I guess I was wrong. I know what'll make you feel better, Rupert. Tonight we're gonna do a little hunting. We're gonna go and find and capture this person. Oh, this might be interesting. If everything goes well, Rupert, we'll definitely be one step closer for being the most well-known, feared, and respected duo in the world. <laughs> now, that's the crystal I don't know and love. However, oh, there's one question I wanted to ask you. What's that? Are you ever going to leave this stupid house and move into a real house, like a big evil castle or something? <laughs> Oh, Rupert, that is so stereotypical. I'm a much more unique witch. You know that. Well, I tried. What do you say, guys? Miranda's Mansion in five minutes? Oh, yeah, sure. I'll be there. Alright, but just for one hour. We need to get a head start on our homework. Oh, come on, sis. 
You're just proving me more right about your intelligence, bro. Wow. Miranda's mansion. I haven't been there in a while. I don't know if I can fit in the building anymore. Ah, ah, don't worry, Alison. They renovated the building to fit monsters up to a hundred foot tall last year, so you should be good. That's great, I'm in. What about you, Wolfgang? No thanks, I'm good. I have to head to the card store and pick up a rare limited edition Ludan card. Coming all the way from China. I've been saving up for a long time for that beauty, and it's going to come in handy for the legendary monster card tournament this Saturday. You guys are coming, right? Oh, I wouldn't miss it, Wolfgang. Uh, I'll see you later. Hey, has anyone seen Mark? I haven't seen or heard from him all day. Yeah, he headed home not too long ago. He was so quiet and looking really down when I saw him last. Something is definitely not right. He, he didn't call me a card-collecting geek when I told him about the tournament during lunchtime. We should go check on him, see if he's alright. Come on, guys. Alright, I guess I'll pick up the card later. If that card is gone from the time we find him, he's dead. Didn't we already establish this joke earlier? This really isn't like Mark at all. We should split up and look at Mark's favourite hangout places. If you find him, let one of us know immediately with the signals I showed you earlier. Alright then, let's go. Ah, oh, hello, young ones. What seems to be troubling you? Professor Egad, have you seen Mark? Mark, Mark, mm, who is that again? He's the invisible boy we hang out with. You expect me to know the location of a boy who is invisible? That makes about as much sense as a comet out in space that has the perfect temperature for making the best ice cream in the galaxy. Actually, that sounds quite intriguing indeed. Ah, oh, Jimmy, you make the best discoveries indeed. Too bad the world didn't understand you and your intellect. Come on, guys, let's go. This zany professor isn't being helpful at all. Not being helpful, eh? I'll come along to show you mediocre mind-possessing monster teens just how unhelpful I really am. So who's ready to search for Mike? Hmm, what was I going to do again? Oh yes, help those teams look for their imaginary friend. Uh, Mark! Mark! Are you here, Mark? Alright, Mark, this is it. This is the opportunity to prove your scariness. you got to be kidding me. Evil spirits all around. Hear this poem that I read. Even though you don't make a sound, I know you're around indeed. Take me out of this forsaken world, where no one knows I exist. No one will miss this lonely goth girl. So please take me with you. I insist. What was that? Oh! <gasps> Are you a ghost? No. Are you an evil spirit? No, I'm not that either. I'm a man, invisible to the naked eye, and I have come to- Take me away. Ugh, finally. Do you know how long I've read that spell to wait for someone like you to take me away from this depressing world? Every night for the past ten months. Ten months. Now that you're here, take me to your world so that I can live in dark harmony. Hold on, let me get this straight. You want me to get you out of this world that you said was dark and depressing to take you to my world which is uh, dark and depressing. Do you realize that doesn't make any sense? It's like a crazy unsolvable riddle. Plus, I'm here to scare you, not take you anywhere. Uh-huh. So, if you can, uh, scare me, then you can take me away? I just told you that I'm not taking you away. But I will. <laughs> We've done it, Rupert. We've caught the unfrightened one. Now we can go into phase two of our plan. You shrunk her to doll size, you thieving witch. That's my human you're running off with. That must be your lair. Time to go and get the... Uh.
Hurry up, Rupert! I can't believe you wanted to get your stupid camera for this. I already had one back at the house. Ah, uh, help me. Get me out of here. Stop moving around like that. You're going to ruin my bag. Rupert, come on, let's go. Your camera's zoom isn't working properly. Plus, what could I say? Tella was in the Unfrightened Swans kidnapping and then threatening her parents to make you well known as evil and sinistra is actually a pretty good step to accomplishing your goal. This is the first time in a very long time when I can say that I'm proud to be your confidant. Aww, that is so sweet, Rupert. Are you sure you don't want me to fix up your playhouse for just a little bit? It could definitely use a woman's touch. Please, Krista, living in your so-called house is enough of a woman starts to make me feel sick in my stomach's every painful hour. Oh, Rupert, that pain in your stomach means you have to cough up a furball, you silly. <laughs> now let's go. No, Rupert, this is a good day today. Please ignore Krista's annoying personality for five more minutes and you'll still have your sanity. That's right. Uh, I'm not wearing that stupid outfit. Now let's go of me. Oh, stop struggling like that and let me put it on you already. The other ones didn't struggle when I put on their clothes on. Oh, wait, they did. That is so disturbing. Well, what do you think, Rupert? You disgust me, Gusto. Uh, I second that command. I third it. She's even more deranged than Wolfgang in his collection of geeky monster cards. How can you turn a one-of-a-kind human who doesn't fear anything and dress her up in this ridiculous outfit? What are you poofing? What happened to the plan? Calm down yourself, you jumpy little cat. Now we're about to do it right now. Let's head over to the other room and prepare the announcement. Let's let little Bo Peep get reunited with her long-lost sheep. <laughs> That was the first evil line ever. Got you. Now I can get you out of here. Ow. Ow, you're squeezing me too tight. What the? You're not a doll, you're just shrunken. Why didn't you walk out of the diorama yourself? Were you expecting me rescued or something? Is there a Prince Charming I'm not aware of? Stop talking nonsense and pick me up, you invisa idiot. All right, then. Let's get out of here, or else that girly girl witch and her evil cat will come back and find out that you're missing. I'm not leaving until I get to my normal size again and get my clothes back. I look really stupid. Yeah, you do, but how are you going to become regular size again? Well, I saw a spell book at the same drawer where she kept her doll's clothes. It's right over there. I see it! This looks like an easy concoction. Let's get started. Greetings, humans and monsters of the world. Do not adjust your TV set, for in this announcement is for real. I am known as Crystal, and from this day forward I will be known throughout this world, so pay attention to this. This particular announcement is for Mr. and Mrs. Rolstein, the owners of Rolstein's mini mall chains throughout 15 states for your human world. And you are the parents of your daughter, whom we know as the Unfrightened One. We have a special request, and if you meet them, we will return your daughter back unharmed. All we simply want is your entire wardrobe of your fabulous clothes from one of your local malls. Wait, what? I've been waiting to get those clothes for so long, but they're just so expensive that it's ridiculous. Not even the coins that I get every day from my cat Rupert isn't enough. So... I want all of your clothes from your mall, free of charge. Otherwise, not only will I hold your daughter hostage, but I will capture all of your customers and place them in my collection. After all, you can never have too many dolls. <laughs> Those are my demands. I expect to hear from you soon. That's all for now. What's wrong with you? I lost any ounce of respect that I had from you.
What do you mean, Rupert? This is perfect. If I get a hold of all of their clothes, I'll be able to dress up my dolls in fashion. And if I don't get a hold of their clothes, I'll just take their customers, turn them into dolls, and not only will I get their clothes, but I'll get new dolls as well. This will definitely make me a huge threat to the humans, knowing that no one is safe. I can take them whenever they, whenever I want, and then I'll definitely become the top monster of the world. Isn't that great? Rupert, where are you going? I'm going to jump off the roof. Rupert, wait! Well, I think that this is it. Let's see if it works. Well, hurry up and turn me back to my full size. So, you think you can steal one of my dolls, did you? Well, you almost got away with it, Invisible One. Now, I think you'll be a very interesting addition to my collection. Oh, really? Let's see if you can catch me when I remove my clothes. Try to catch me now. Heh. <laughs> Is that all you got? That's no threat to me. You may be invisible to the naked eye, but there are a few tricks to work around that. This light can be able to detect your body heat, which in a way can make me still see you. That doesn't sound good. Now you cannot get away from me. I can see your every move now. You're finished. There's nothing else that you can do. Huh? What is that? Ah! A giant woman is attacking my beautiful house, Rupert! Allison, how'd you know that I was here? Well, as I began to search every nook and cranny around Dread City, I recognized your car driving towards the tunnel to the human world. I began to follow you and it led me here to this house. I hid until it was the perfect time to strike. Well, you came at the perfect time, Allison. Ugh, you mindless brute! Wrecking other people's houses just like that? You will pay for that indeed! Huh? Where's my wand? It's no longer a wand. They're now your new chopsticks! My wand! It's broken! That's right, now you can no longer use it. Now look what you've done to it. It has a bad chip on it. Here, try this on for size. Ha! Don't worry, Allison, I think I did it. I broke that crazy old witch's wand. We're going to win this battle for sure. We're going to... Ugh! 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 Mark, what's going on? I don't know, Allison. It's like I'm being to ah attack ah someone over ah uh, over there ah ah stop that ow! <laughs> That's right. I'm gonna give you a taste of your own medicine. Now you'll be able to be attacked by one of my own dolls. Except that I put him under two spells: one to control him and one to make him invisible. What are you gonna do now, huh? Allison, I know this is something that I rarely say, but I'm desperate. I need your help, please! Really? You need my help, Mark? But he's invisible just like you. Can't you see him as well? No, of course not! Where'd you come up with an idea like that? Just because I'm invisible, I can see other invisible things? It doesn't work like that! Oh, well, that's kind of ironic when you think about it. Allison! Oh, right. What can I do to help, Mark? What can I do? Oh, I know. <laughs> Oh, Rupert, this feels so great! Who would have known that torturing and hurting other human beings can be so much fun? As well as other natural beings. What the? You like dolls, right? Well, I like dolls too, and you're just the perfect size to be one. We're going to have so much fun. I have this perfect outfit that would look so great on you. Oh! Of course! He's being controlled by her wand, Allison! I need her wand! I was just having fun. Oh, all right. Let me go, you brute! I swear I'm gonna cast a spell on you! Try me. This isn't the last time you hear from me. I'll be back soon enough. Well, that was... disappointing. I'll say she should at least put up more of a fight. Yeah, thanks for your help, by the way. You're welcome. The most important thing is that you're safe. Let's get out of here. 
Hold on a second. What are you doing? I figured that if we bring these humans back to their normal size, it'll give that witch an even bigger migraine knowing that her collection will be gone for good. Hopefully it'll teach her a lesson. Wow, Mark. That's so noble of you. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Let's have a race back to the city. I bet I beat you this time. You're on. I can't believe I lost again. That's about 100 for Allison, and, uh, how many did you have again, Mark? Shut it, Wolfgang. No, you are not in a position for me to shut it. Because of you, that rare Ludan card was sold out to someone else, and, and where was I? Wasting my time looking for your stupid butt. And where were you? Out in the human world, partaking in a stupid bet that those two idiots, Brendel and Norman, told you to do. Why is it that you always listen to those guys, Mark? It ain't fun of my dad, alright? You know what it's like when your pot is on the line you do anything to get it back after someone trashes it? I didn't just do it for myself, but for my dad as well. You see, I never met him. But I heard so many great things about him from Mom and anyone else who knew him. When Brendel and Norman called him a stupid human who did a stupid experiment and me not scary, I just snapped. I'm sorry that I got you guys so worried. Thanks for taking the time to look for me. No problem, Mark. We are your friends after all. Thanks, Drake. And thanks for helping me out as well, Allison. Without you, I would have been in deep trouble. Aw, you would have figured it out without me. You know, for a sarcastic guy, you're very smart when it comes to getting out of situations. As well as that nice concoction you did to get those humans back to normal. Yeah, if only you could use that same untapped intelligence to not get into these stupid little races. Hey, it's still fun, right, Allison? Yeah, especially for me. Don't worry, I'll get my win one day, you'll see. We'll see indeed. Listen, guys, I think we have our hands full competing for Top Monster. That crazy witch is really going to seek revenge on Allison and me for taking away her collection, so we better keep our eyes open. We can't underestimate her despite the fact that she uses her powers to shrink humans and dress them up like dolls. Who knows? We could be next, so we better prepare ourselves. Well, you may not have the ability to scare humans easily like we can, Mark, but you have your own unique way of doing things. I think that your dad would have been proud. Thanks, man. That means a lot. Well, that's the bell. Let's go, guys. Little Monsters star Taylor White as Professor Ernest E. Gad Gadsen. Kieran Vanstone as Drake. Charles Benfield as Sheldon. Mark D. Nicholson as Mark. Michael McKinney as Wolfgang. Sidney Nelson as Allison and Allison's mother. Maddie Molly as Rupert. Kevin Guglielmo as Professor McGinnis and Norman. Patricia Miranda as Elsa, Miss Nightgrave, Crystal, and the Unfrightened One. Stay tuned next time for plays from more of Manic Expression's talented members and find all their videos, blogs, and other creative endeavors at ManicExpression.com.